The idea with surfers is you try and look as much like seaweed as you can. And I had a right. <laughs> I had sun bleached hair on my shoulders. I wore turquoise shirts with white flowers. I wore bright orange corduroys. And so that's why I was surprised. I mean, it looked like something the cat had dragged in. That's why I was surprised when this 93-year-old Presbyterian minister in a three-piece suit walked into my surf shop, reached out his hand, shook my hand, and says, I hear you've become a Christian. I've come to congratulate you. He had $10 in his hand. I like that man from the moment I met him. <laughs> but we, the Reverend George Dempson and I, built up this relationship. I was a hippie. He was the older generation, and there was no generation gap. We were like brothers in Christ. And for two years, I'd go around regularly to his home. He'd tell me stories of the First World War and how as a chaplain he ministered to soldiers who were about to go into battle. And then one day his wife called and said, George is about to die. Would you come and be with us at this time? And so I went around and she was on the phone and the phone was like, she ushered me in. She's on the phone. The phone had a, a loud ring because George was partly deaf. She ushered me into his bedroom. He was lying there. He looked like he'd already gone. He said, didn't have his teeth in. I sat next to him. He said, Ray, is that you? And I said, yes, it is, George. I've come to be with you at this time. And he says, I'm going to be with Jesus. And I sat there and thought, what a privilege I have of being present when a saint goes marching through to glory. And for the next 20 minutes, I, I was saying to myself, how will he go, Lord? How will he go? And after that 20 minutes, suddenly he lifted his hand to the heavens, pointed to the sky and said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Oh, and I thought, whoa, what a way to go. Suddenly the phone rang, he sat up, and I was the one that just about died. <laughs> <laughs> he lasted another two years. <laughs> but when he did go, we sung that song, that great hymn to God, be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he the world that he gave us a son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. What a glorious gospel we have. And that's why I'm a zealous Christian. I'm a normal biblical Christian. I've found everlasting life. I cannot but speak that which we've seen and heard. Amen. Amen to that. And then so... Brother, I couldn't help but look at your shoes. What size are those? <laughs> If there's another flood, our family would like one of those as a boat. <laughs> yeah, I was in Santa Monica preaching, and I had a crowd of about 40 people, and this woman, probably in her mid-20s, called out using the F word twice and describing me. So I said to her, ma'am, can you watch your language? There are ladies present. <laughs> and she says, I'm a lady. I said, Madam, you may be a woman, but you're not a lady. And she ran at me like a bat out of heaven. <laughs> and she beat me to a pulp. She wasn't the normal scratch, scratch, pull, pull. She was like Mike Tyson's sister. <laughs> she had me laid out <laughs> on the ground. And I was lying on the ground. My team pulled her off. And she said, let me get my handbag. And they let her go. And that's when she got in a kidney punch. But she doubled my crowd, and I was able to keep preaching, and she can come back any time she wants. <laughs> it took two weeks for the bruising to go, so she's a sweetie. But I asked for that. I should have kept my mouth shut. Whoever keeps his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles and his body from bruises. The fear of man brings a sneer. Think of a firefighter. He arrives at a fire, and he looks up, and there's a woman five stories up with three children. And they're gripping her like for dear life because there's flames right behind them that are going to consume them within about three minutes and they're going to die a horrible death. So what does a firefighter do? Wow, 60-foot ladder I've got to climb. Reach out and grab kids off a woman with flames, leap, smoke everywhere. I think I'll go home and be with my wife. No, he's a firefighter. Is he fearful? Absolutely. He's terrified. He thinks of that woman and her terrible fate. He doesn't think of his fears. He thinks, what's going to happen to that woman if I listen to my fears? And that's the key to overcoming your fears. Don't think of your fears. I mean, they're so unfounded. What are you going to, someone's going to say, you silly religious nut, don't want to talk to you. You know, so what? 
You know, it's no big deal. Jesus was despised and rejected of men. And it's going to happen to us. And if it happens now and then, don't take it to heart. You're suffering from the name of Christ. It's not really suffering. I don't bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So think of the fate of the ungodly, lake of fire. Think of the fear of death that haunts unsaved people. That's the scripture that, in the Amplified, let me quote the Amplified Bible. I'll quote it a little louder because it's the Amplified Bible. <laughs> it says, the whole world is haunted by the fear of death all their lifetime. And so when I meet an unsaved person in the local college, I go to the local college twice a day with my dog wearing sunglasses, and I film, and often I'll say to someone right off the bat, you want to do an interview? Yeah, okay, let's begin. I get permission. Then I say, are you afraid of dying? And they'll often say, a little bit. I say, a little bit? Are you kidding me? You're haunted by the fear of death. Am I right? They say, yeah, I think about it all the time. And my heart breaks, and I look in their eyes. You know, if, I don't know if you had this experience. You can look into a dog's eyes and actually see what it's thinking, even though it's not thinking in English. You know what the dog's thinking. If you've got a dog, I say to my dog, get her and look her in the eyes and say, we saw a cat today, didn't we? <laughs> you, know? you can see the information being processed, and I see the same thing with human beings. As I say, it's a haunting fear of death, and I, I know what they're thinking. They're thinking, how did this guy know? I haven't told mom, I haven't told dad, I haven't told my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my friends don't know, but I'm terrified of death. That's why the world keeps itself so busy. That's why they don't think about death, because they got no answer to it. And so that's when I bring out in the Old Testament, God promised he'd destroy death. New Testament tells us how he did it, and they latch onto it like a dying man, because it's appealing to that will to live. So my confidence and my way of getting rid of my fears is to not think of my fears, but think of the fate of the person I'm talking to. That they're held captive by the fear of death, and if they die in their sins, if they think death is fearful this side, wait until they get to the other side. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I'd rather fall under the face of the sun than fall into the hands of the living God. And the Apostle Paul said, wherefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So there's a great motivation to share the gospel. If you think of God as a celestial Santa Claus, you won't bother obeying him. But if you fear the Lord, then you'll run to do his will, and you'll fear for the fate of the ungodly. I love the words of D.L. Moody, where he said, I'd rather set a thousand to work than do the work of a thousand. There's something about a YouTube channel I think is so unique and so wonderful. Let me go back to dogs just for a minute, because I'm a dog maniac. If you brought a dog in here, I'm not kidding, I would lie on the floor just to relate to the dog. I just love dogs. I love getting down to them, looking at their eyes. They love when I get down to their level. I've never taught my dog to recognize another dog. In fact, she's been pretty sheltered since we got her as a little puppy. She hasn't seen a Great Dane. She hasn't seen a Chihuahua. And yet, she recognizes her own kind. I didn't get an encyclopedia and say, see this horse? That's a Great Dane. See this mouse? That's a Chihuahua. They're both dogs. Get it? They're dogs, your kind. There's the smiles in the back, the tail, it's four legs, ears, and they're, they're just all different, but that she recognizes any dog. A dog is a dog. A cat is with no education. Fascination for our own kind. Human beings have the same thing. We have a fascination for our own kind. I don't know if you've experienced, you're watching Super Bowl, and they pan the crowd, and you say, hey, look at that guy's hairstyle. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, that looks like Uncle Arthur. Look, the same ears. You know, we're just so fascinated by human features. And YouTube, with our channel, lets you as a human being be a fly on the wall over my shoulder looking at another human being reacting to the most intimate of questions. So the atheist is a fool, as the Bible says, and the heavens declare the glory of God every time we look at the sky. It's God's painting. The heavens declare the glory of God, those big puffy white clouds or the sunrise or the sunset or the stars or the moon or the sun, the heavens declare his glory. When we broke away from Great Britain, it wasn't a suggestion, it was a declaration, a declaration of independence. It was a declaration, and the heavens declare the glory. There's no argument, and that's why don't spend too long 
addressing the intellect of an atheist, go for his conscience. Just say, do you think you're a good person? And that changes the dynamic. And I, I don't say with any boast, I could sit next to an Einstein on a plane. And believe me, I've sat next to a lot of people on planes, and let me explain something to you. I always prayed for the person. If there was an empty seat next to me on a plane, this is the prayer that I would pray, and I'm not kidding. Oh, God, don't let them show up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That was my deepest heart's desire, that no one would sit in this seat and have a great flight. But I've learned if even as an, uh, an Einstein next to me, I can talk to him about all sorts of subjects and then say, do you think you're a good person? And suddenly it's a level playing field. Is it the same inspiration that you have in writing books? Because that, that's different. You don't have the, the person in front of you. You're writing. This is long hours of editing and all of those things. Uh, is it the same mindset of saying what you said about Moody's uh, quote of, if I can just get this out there, is that the same mindset or is it different when you write a book? I write in the night. I've got a very tolerant wife. She's made for comfort. She's four foot eleven. Looks up to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, she that's she's nice. a wonderful wife. Actually, I locked her in the chicken coop yesterday accidentally. <laughs> but I'm going to get her out soon. I'll let her out soon. Uh, I better jump in here and give some more details. We're cleaning the chicken coop, and when I exit it, I automatically lock the door. This is because my dog is part Australian Shepherd, which means she has an instinct to herd, and she's incessantly trying to get into the chicken coop, and when she does, it's absolute chaos. So I locked the door, forgot about Sue being in there, went inside and heard her call out, you lock me in the chicken coop. She's kind of used to things like that. We've got 24 chickens, and someone here gave me some chicken socks today, which was a highlight of my life. I love chickens, they lay eggs, did you know that? <laughs> and, and not only that, I've taught my chickens how to lay eggs every day, and they lay them really quick. I just lean in there and say, what's for dinner tonight, ladies, eggs or chicken? <laughs> they pump them out for me. I've got a very tolerant wife, and I write in the night. I hate sleep. I think sleep's a ridiculous waste of time. It's a part of the curse. We have to sleep. He gives his beloved sleep, but it's quite insane that we go into seven hours of insanity and dream about pink elephants floating through the sky. We're riding on the back of them. We think it's quite sane when it's happening. We don't even choose the programming. <laughs> I mean, seriously, one night you get a, a horror movie. Next night it's a comedy floating with that pink. Next night it's some X-rated thing. Did I dream that? And who's choosing the program? You don't even have a choice. We go into a seven hours of insanity, and in the morning you wake up feeling worse than when you sleep. And you look worse. Your breath could kill a house plant at 12 paces, and you've got an outstanding hairstyle, so I don't like sleep. So <laughs> what I try and do is wake up and write in the night when there's no one interrupting. Tell us a little bit, because you just released the book within the last couple of weeks, yes. uh, and you're so generous to let us have a few copies of those. Yeah, I brought 100 copies of this book. It's called Volatile. And it's the nations, the Bible says, will attack Israel in the latter days. And the reason we had this, I wrote this book, and I love writing it, is because if someone is looking for a peg to hang their intellectual hat on, it's Bible prophecy. In the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse, verse Paul, I forgot the verse. <laughs> It says of Paul, he reasoned with them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. The law of Moses goes to, the, goes to the conscience. The prophets go to the intellect. So God has given us prophecy to convince that the Bible is the word of God. And Ezekiel actually names the countries that will come down on Israel in the latter days. And so what this book does is shows the Bible is credible, its offer of everlasting life is worthy of a second look. So I brought 100 copies today. Well, They're on the back uh, table over there, so maybe way, you could so. take one for yourself and your family. But, um, yeah, they're free. So I want to ask a few rapid-fire questions. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I thought you'd been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the hole in your bed. You sleep with a <laughs> hole in your bed. I've heard this a number of times, and I just would like an explanation because is this a custom-made hole? Did you Do you have like a fancy mattress and they've custom-made one for Ray Comfort because of your name, or are you getting... What, what, what is it, what's up with this hole in your bed? 
Yeah, spondylolisthesis thesis is a weakness on the spine. I found that I had it when I was about 20. I felt this pain in my back, went to a specialist. He took x-rays. He says, you've got spondylolisthesis. There's a pressure on the spine. If I lay on this floor for 10 minutes, I could hardly walk. And I found that I could hardly walk when I got out of bed. And one day I had a thought, it's the mattress. It's too firm. And so instead of getting a soft mattress, without telling my wife, who's very sweet and tolerant, I went and got a very sharp knife and cut a hole in the mattress <laughs> that's that round, that deep. It's one of those rubber mattresses, a purple, they're called purple mattresses. I picked the hole out. Who says you can't grab a hole and take it out? But I took the hole out, put it under the bed, jumped in the bed, and I never had back pain again. Totally solved it. They're called comfort mattresses. <laughs> no. You think that'll work for me? I don't know. They've got mattresses your size. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sue and I sleep sideways in a single bed. <laughs> <laughs> so we hadn't got to know much about your wife other than she's 4'11 and she tolerates you. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your, your wife. Oh, she's beautiful. Her name's Sue. We're the best of friends. We were called parakeets when we worked in a bank together. She didn't like me to begin with. One day, we had to take a remittance across to the other side of the city, and I had a motorbike. But she asked, could I take her across the other side of the city? And so she had to wrap, she had to wrap her arms around me to hold on. And when she felt that six-pack, it was all over. <laughs> 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 she just melted. And... Uh, <laughs> So you've been doing this for, as far as going out to uh, Huntington Beach, you've been doing YouTube. What do you guys see as you look at Living Waters, um, the future for Living Waters? What is next on the horizon? What are you guys praying through as far as here's where else we would like to reach that we haven't got a chance to reach yet? Yeah, last year uh, we did an outreach in London. I remember watching the Queen, no, Princess... Diana get married to Charles about 200 years ago, and I remember watching it and thinking to myself, as the Archbishop of Canterbury got to the marriage vows, he said, and this is a type of Christ and the church. And I said, now, preach the gospel to the billions who are watching this. Do it now, you've got license. And he didn't. Marriage is a type of Christ and the church. And he just went on and just blah, blah, blah. And I was so disappointed. And I thought, that was an absolute godsend springboard. So when Charles was becoming king, I realized after studying the vows that the queen made during her coronation that it was all wrapped up in the Bible. She had to place her hand on the Bible when she became queen and swear to, swear to uphold before God the biblical truth of salvation by grace through faith. And so I thought, wow, this, this is going to happen with Charles. I knew he, he was going to go through these same things. So we got a, a, a million pound tract printed. Didn't have the word pound on it, but it looked like a pound. And we had the gospel on one side, and we gave them out in Australia, New Zealand, in, throughout Europe and England and uh, other countries. And I think 22,000 people in one day gave out 16 million of those gospel tracts. And hardly anyone refused. And you know who Mark Spence is? Mark was so humble as he came back from London, he took a team over there. He broke down in tears on the podcast and said, I've got an apology to make to you because I ho-hummed this whole thing of the King of England when I first heard you talk about it. He t actually said, it's not going to work, and he walked out of my office. And he burst into tears on the podcast and said, this was the most amazing experience of my life to see so many tracks going out to so many people and then running off them, holding on to them like they're, it's a collectible. They're not going to throw it away. It's, it looks so valuable as a collectible. And so we're coming up to the Paris Olympics. And so we're having 12 million Olympic tracks, millions printed. We're having some printed in England, some printed in Australia, some printed in the US, and I think in Europe. There's the euro, the pound, the dollar in Australia, and then the dollar in the, in the U.S. And so you could pray about that. We've got a team going to Paris. If you want to go to Paris, you can join the team. We've got a conference there. I think nearly 600 people have already registered. It's free, and we're going to train up and then take that gospel in this form of an Olympic million to literally millions that are going to pack Paris and do the same thing in Australia because 
Three billion people watch the Olympics. 3,000 million. So this is a wonderful opportunity to put something in their hand that looks like a collectible. That is a collectible with a gospel on the other side. So if you want to be involved, just go to livingwaters.com forward slash Paris. What, what would people need to do? They have these. Instead of just keeping them as a collector, uh, you should give it out. How would you hand this out to someone? Let me what, show what is that? Let me show you. Go on. That conversation. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You don't say anything. Yeah, I do say something. I was, okay. being, I was being facetious, um, <laughs> which is against my nature. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, we train people on how to give out tracks. Um, what you do is you keep the tract in a, in a pocket close at hand, and then you bend the arm at the elbow like that, and you grab the tract and extend the elbow, and when the person, the victim in front of you goes to take it, <laughs> you let it go like that. It's a six-week training course, in fact. <laughs> and all you do is say something like, did you get your million? Really, just say, did you get your million? People say, what is it? It's a million. That's it. You'll, you'll, you'll think of me when you get the change. Or we've got one, called, I don't know if I've got it here, it's called the Giant Money. It's this big. It's a $100 bill. At the drive through just say, can you break a large bill? <laughs> and and it make, makes people laugh, and it's got the gospel on the back, so it makes sure you read the message on the back. Well, one more question before we get to the, the prayer request that I want you to talk about. How do you get your dog to keep sunglasses on? It's reward and punishment. That, that's, that's the thing, naughty girl, or you give a reward, and it's also got uh, elastic band under the... <laughs> <laughs> And around the head, so she's got no choice. Okay, all right. You don't see all that on camera. Yeah, That's you don't fair. see it on camera because it's the same color as her fur. Ah. And every time I put the glasses on, I say, you're a good girl. This is getting people coming up to us. Here's your treat. So every time I put the glasses on, she gets a treat. And so she's pleased to be wearing them. Okay, all right. Well, she's told me so. <laughs> she told you. <laughs> That's good. Well, of course, at the end of interviews, one thing I like to conclude with is... Uh, we, we are so blessed with your time here, uh, but we want to continue to be praying for you and your ministry uh, far beyond today. And so um, I've asked Ray to put together uh, just three prayer requests that we can jot down and we will commit to pray for, for you and your family and, and your ministry. Uh, yeah, number one, my heart's desire is for worldwide revival. As the scripture in the Old Testament says, the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth where the Lord has covered the sea. And I would, Jesus is coming for a spotless church, a glorious church, not a wimping church, and I, I'm believing for a, a wonderful revival where literally millions or even billions come to the Savior, um, that God would use our YouTube channel in a wonderful way. As I said, the Billy Graham Crusades are such a big effort to reach so few compared to what we can reach just with a push of a button, so please pray about that because there's billions. We've just got a uh, Hindi channel. It's Living Waters Hindi. And it's been a step of faith because there's probably about 71 views on some of these ones that have got millions in the English, and we just don't know how to get it to those in India because it's massive in India. The biggest YouTube channel is India. And so uh, we're believing for God to tell us how we can publicize this. And then for wisdom and speaking with the lost. Yeah, that, that's my personal prayer. And prayer for yourself. God was so thrilled, if I may say that, with Solomon when he asked for wisdom that God just said, I'll give you wisdom and long life and riches. And the Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally. And the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, he that gets wisdom loves his own soul. And so that's an, an open checkbook God's given us to pray for wisdom, and he says he will give it. And so each of us need it when we speak to the lost, because there's nothing more important. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com. If you've never seen this video, get your tissues out. It's going to make you cry. You're going to love it. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.